Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my channel and this week I am going to be doing some DIYs that have been on my to try list. Not my to do list, my to try list. Cause if you're like me, you see all these DIYs all over the internet and you just need to try them out just to get it out of your DIY system. And when I was looking at my list of DIYs that I want to try, I realized that these four DIYs I'm about to tackle actually have a common theme to them. And that theme is vintage. It's taking an item that you can find at pretty much any thrift store and kind of giving it that expensive antique look. Well, it could be expensive if the DIY turns out well. It could look like a piece of crap after. We don't know. So with all of that being said, let's get into it and let's try out these DIYs. Okay, so this first DIY up, we're gonna be working with some gold leaf. Imitation gold leaf, of course, cause real gold leaf is very expensive, but this is just gold leaf sheets. You can get it from any craft store. And I also had these gold leaf flakes sitting around for a while now. I have limited experience with gold leaf. <laughs> um, I've worked with it probably two or three times. So I do know what I'm doing, but I also don't really know what I'm doing. And what I'm gonna be doing is adding gold leaf to these two trays. This tray I got from the thrift store for $3. This one I think was $2. And I think I've actually seen gold leaf leaf trays. And I think this actually can get pretty expensive. So I have Mod Podge here, got a paintbrush. I'm gonna start in small sections and then just kind of go from there. Brush that over the top. And I'm gonna let that little section of Mod Podge get tacky. I think the key is to wait a hot second before you put the uh, gold leaf on. Now I'm gonna kind of like slightly crinkle this. Crinkle, 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 crinkle. And now we're just gonna lay it over the Mod Podge. And I saw a video where a girl used like an old makeup sponge to get the excess gold leaf off. Tap that, see how that works. I'm not sure if I waited long enough for the tackiness of the Mod Podge to build up. I don't think that looks bad for not knowing what I'm doing. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna let that get tacky. Oh wait, hold on. Ah! I'm getting gold leaf everywhere. Okay, it's working great. Crumple, 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 crumple. Okay, yeah, that's looking nice. I of course have all these gaps, but I think the key to gold leaf is to do multiple layers. That's where there's more texture and depth that's added to the gold leaf when you do multiple layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my first coat across this whole leaf and then go back in and start filling in all of those gaps. Nobody talks about how messy gold leaf is. Everybody like harps on glitter being super messy and getting everywhere. I'm pretty sure gold leaf is just as bad. It is everywhere and it is gonna be such a pain to clean up, but that is okay. This took a while and I didn't even fully cover up all of the cracks because I kind of actually liked the way this looked. It looks a little distressed to me and I think it looks kind of cool. And from doing this, I feel like I learned a lot. Tip number one, definitely work in small sections. Tip number two, keep the gold leaf sheet on the uh, little piece of paper that it comes on and crumple it. That works great. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and do a top coat over this whole thing, let it sit, and then I'll move on to this little guy and do the same thing. And uh, then we can move on to the second DIY. Okay 
guys, let's move on to this second DIY. And next up, I am gonna be doing some DIY depression glass. For this DIY, I just picked up a bunch of these like cheap glass vases in all shapes and sizes. And I have Mod Podge, water, food coloring, and a mixy mixer bowl. I'm a little sad because my food coloring pack didn't come with orange and in a few videos I saw orange turns to that really like pretty like amber glass that we all love. But I'm thinking of combining green and pink to make like a lightish brown and see how that turns out. It might look cool or it might look really ugly. I am just gonna get started and kind of explain what I'm doing as I work. Bowl. In the instructions I saw, it said one part Mod Podge to half part water, but I don't know how much Mod Podge to use. I don't know, should I use this little measuring cup? We've got Mod Podge. Now I'm just gonna do a little splashy splash of water. Um, and I'll start with green. That's really light. So I'm gonna add more. We're gonna add a little bit of this blue just to see what that does. I'm gonna do a little bit more green. That's a pretty color. Can you see it? <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but I wanna spill. Let's do this one. Dump that in there. Now I'm just gonna swirl this around keep swirling it until it covers everything. Now you just take whatever vase or glass piece you're using, you tip it upside down, and I covered a cookie sheet with tin foil, and you put it on your cookie sheet upside down. Okay, that was the first one all done, and I like the color a lot. So let's move on to the next one. I feel like I don't have to measure out the Mod Podge. I'm just gonna wing it. Tiny bit of water. Okay, I'm just gonna go for it. I know pink and green will turn to like a brownish color. So I'm hoping that turns to the desired amber that I love. Yeah, that's pretty-ish. I don't know. This kind of looks like coffee with a lot of cream in it. Mmm, it's making me want coffee. Dump it in. Okay, I don't know if this color is gonna stay the same or different, but I don't mind it. I don't mind that color. For the third and final one that I have here, I think I'm gonna just do a classic pink because I love pink glass. Dump it in this last one. It's actually very hard to spin. So for these next steps, I have seen a few different ways of going about this. I have seen people that wait an hour before they even put these in the oven, and then I've seen people that put these right in the oven. I've also seen different bake times and temperatures. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait probably 30 minutes to just let these drain, and I'm gonna put these in the oven for 45 minutes at 2 15. It might take an hour, but I'm just gonna keep checking them and see how they look. So fingers crossed, these turn out cool and they look like depression glass. At least that's the goal. <laughs> Okay guys, it has actually been a few days since I did this DIY and clearly <laughs> the first round turned out like poop and I'm kind of bummed that I went ahead and did all three. I should have done just one and then saw how that one turned out and adjusted how I did this DIY, but I'm pretty sure I have figured out what went wrong with this first round. You do indeed need to let the item sit for a full hour before you put them in the oven. Letting them sit for 30 minutes is clearly not long enough. So I'm gonna see if I can actually get this DIY to turn out because I know it can look super duper cool. Okay guys, so for this third DIY, it is by far the easiest DIY of this whole video, but it's the DIY that I was the most excited to try. And for this project, I picked up these vases. If you wanna do this project, you need to find a vase or a bottle with a slender neck. It has to be slender enough that you can find a washer that can sit on top. And I'm gonna be using some E6000 to attach the washers to the top of each one of these bottles. And I'm 
gonna be turning these vases into a lantern. So I got some lamp oil, I got some extra wicks, and the wick will sit down in that washer and the washer will of course hold the wick up. So I am gonna get started. This is gonna be very easy, very quick, but I'm hoping this looks really cool in the end. So I ended up redoing this DIY, not because anything went wrong in the first place, but I just wanted to adjust a few things. The first thing that I wanted to change was the bottles that I used. I realized that I got three of the same bottle and I wanted to have a variety in size, shape, and color. And a few of these bottles are just from the dollar store, so you can definitely find some really pretty, inexpensive bottles out there to do this DIY. Then I went ahead and used some supplies I already had had laying around to make the washers gold. When I was looking for washers, I couldn't find gold ones that were the correct size, and having the washers be gold makes them match the little metal piece that comes with the wick. Also, personally, I am just a fan of gold over silver anyway. And the final thing that I recommend is making sure that you have a funnel that is the correct size to fill up these oil lamps, because I didn't have that, and I made a huge mess with the oil. But it's okay, it was fine in the end. I got them filled up and just like I thought, I am so obsessed with these little oil lamps. Good morning guys! Do we see this cute little moment happening behind me? I love those lanterns so much. Such a cool DIY. So for this fourth and final DIY, I am going to be decoupaging. And the vases that I got for this project, I went ahead and painted them this morning so that these were good to go once I got started. And the original intent of this DIY is to create a faux chinoiserie vase. And for this vase, I did get some napkins that have that classic chinoiserie look to them, but those napkins haven't arrived yet, so they should be here within like two hours. So once I get them, I'll be able to start on this vase. But for this vase, I got these floral napkins, and even though these don't have a classic chinoiserie look to them, I just loved this napkin and the print, so I think it's still gonna look really cool. The first step in this DIY is pretty tedious, and it is cutting out all of these flowers and getting as close to the flower as possible, leaving little excess of any of the other parts of the napkin. So I'm gonna get started cutting out all of these flowers and figuring out a pattern that I wanna do on this vase, and then we can go from there. Show me life, show me love Make a change, time is up We can wait for better days, but the days won't come Show me life, show me love Okay, so I have spent some time cutting out these little flowers. I don't think I have enough currently to cover the whole vase, but I just want to start the decoupage process so that I can kind of see how this is going and how much more flowers I have to cut out. Also, I did go ahead and do a little tester piece right here, and I realized that uh, this background napkin color is more of a tan color. So I went ahead and did a layer of tan paint on this vase so that everything blends in nicely. So I'm just gonna show you guys how I'm doing this. It's really super duper easy. So I'm just gonna pick a random flower and because this is a napkin, there should be a few layers and with this particular napkin, there's just two layers. We're gonna get it. We are going to get it. There we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take a little bit of Mod Podge and just brush it on the vase. Taking my little piece, going to lay it on that section. And now I'm going to take my paintbrush and smooth out over that. You want to be very delicate and light with it because of course it's a thin napkin layer, so you don't want to tear it. 
Okay, so now I'm just basically going to uh, rinse and repeat this process a million times more. We can wait for better days, but the days won't come. Show me life. Show me love. Guys. I should have not done this DIY because I now have an obsession with decoupaging. I have spent several hours online looking at pretty napkins I can use to decorate vases. I feel like this has opened up a world of opportunity because the only decoupaging experience I have previous to this is a jar with some cut up tissue paper in elementary school. And although my mom really liked her Mother's Day present that year, I feel like decoupage as an adult, you can really create some really cool artistic vases. And not to knock the whole plaster DIYs of using plaster to upcycle an old vase, but I just feel like I see a lot of that. And the decoupaging is just something new and it's just as cheap as the plaster DIY. And you can create some really cool, unique vases. And after finishing the first vase, I went right into working on the second vase. And I will say, I think the first vase definitely turned out cleaner and nicer than the second vase for a few reasons. If you try out this DIY, I recommend sticking to a vase that has a simpler shape. Working around the curve at the top of this vase, it was pretty hard to get the napkin to lay nicely. So from far away, the vase looks great, but up close, you can definitely see crinkles in the napkin. And also something I would change is the napkin I got. With the first vase, I was working with a bunch of small pieces, which was easier to get a nice flat application. And with these napkins, I could only really cut out a large section of the design. So I linked down below some napkins that have that classic chinoiserie look to them, but within the design, there are options for cutting out smaller pieces. And that is it guys. I am so happy with how these DIYs turned out. And looking back, I realized you could combine a few of these DIYs together to make your own unique vintage inspired decor items. For example, you could do the depression glass DIY and then turn them into an oil lamp. You could decoupage something and add some gold leaf. And honestly, the possibilities of combining these DIYs are pretty endless. And I also had so much fun picking out areas in my house to sprinkle these DIYs around. Feels like it really freshened up my house and it's just nice to have a few new decor items. So I hope you guys liked this video and these projects. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.